कुछ ही देर में मोजी बाबा हमारे बीच में होंगे और हम उनका पुनः हृदय से हार्दिक स्वागत करेंगे और इस कार्यक्रम का आनंद लेंगे In few moments, Moji Baba will, will be with us, and we welcome him fully with our hearts, and we'll begin the today's events. Thank you. Namaste, welcome everyone to Satsang here at the International Yoga Festival here on uh, in Rishikesh. Uh, I would love to uh, uh, first of all thank Krishan. I don't know where you are, Krishan. Thank you for your invitation for us to come here. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, last time I was here, maybe two. Two years ago, maybe two years ago, I came, and I'm happy to see that uh, uh, the, the festival has grown, also expanded, and um, so much more stalls are here, and has a, a feel of a, a very auspicious event for people coming from around the world. So thank you, um, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> um, as uh, many of you are aware, that uh, mm, the, the, this kind of satsang that I've been sharing here in uh, Rishikesh.
for a number of years. It is really called um, Advaita Satsangs, Advaita Satsang. And if I can just say a few words about that for people who are not familiar. Um, it really is, uh, if I can use simple words, it would mean that it would be that most people who are searching for truth, for God, of course they are aware that the discovery of truth or God must happen inside themselves also. If they are going to discover something only outside or appearing to be outside, still it has to be confirmed inside. So Advaita simply points to that the reality of all things is one. It's one whole. This is not really in conflict with any particular religion. Because even if you are a Bhakta, one who worships God, searching for God, your highest experience is going to take place internally, inside your own heart. So I don't want to make something too technical, whether you are searching for God as a God who is somewhere apart from you, or that the reality is within you, the experience of either is going to happen inside your own self. And so, when I speak of Advaita, I don't want to put too many technical or complicated terms. What our teaching show is that whatever discovery you will make, ultimately, it will discover the reality within your own self. Not a personal self, not even a personal discovery, but when the truth is found, the limited idea of person will merge in the greater understanding of truth. So I'm just going to leave it like that. So, uh, of course, I don't want to come and discuss uh, spiritual philosophy and ideologies and so on. I am not this. What we are here to discover in the short time that we have is how far we can go into coming to a profound inner experiential understanding and inner experience of the truth that we seek. Now, I don't have to go through too many explanations because many people I see here, I'm aware that they have been following the path for some time. So I'm not going to uh, just pretend that I'm speaking to people who are coming to satsang for the first time, although they are some. But for the short time that we have here, I am going to use this time to accept questions from you um, who feel that you have to come to a, a real understanding today, not merely a philosophical or intellectual understanding, but a firm, profound and experiential experience so that you can stand in the authority of that seeing. So, thank you and uh, the floor is open to you. So already some hands are going up. We can start somewhere here with someone right here. You will, I don't know what we have suggested. The microphone is here. Ah, you will come to the front for me, please. While you're making your way to the microphone, I'm looking around and just actually uh, seeing how much work how much care has gone into preparing this place for us to come. And I am just one amongst many people who will be coming here. But uh, it's, a, it's a very uh, advanced uh, from the last time I was coming here. So thank you for that. Sir, please, oh, sorry, come. Um, namaste. Namaste, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for blessing us with your grace. 
Thank you. Um, my question to you is, sometimes when humans go through a tremendous amount of trauma through their living, um, there are moments where there irrefutably uh, an opening of love or a wellspring of love does occur. Um, it's hard to understand where that comes from at the time of trauma. But if you surrender to it, it's something that guides you gracefully, with dignity, with happiness and joy through the worst suffering that you may go through. The mind or the heart also recognizes that that is, um, if one could call it divine love or protection. My question is, how does one be that divine love, but with detachment over here? Um, well, okay, one step at a time. Before you can be that, you must first of all come to uh, a deepening experience into that. Initially, supposing, as you say, that we have gone through many traumas in life, I don't think there's anyone who has not gone through a little trauma. Because even if you're a king or the most wealthy person in the world, it does not protect you from trauma. Suppose you had all the things in the world that could make you happy. Hmm? Riches and all the people imagine. I'm not going to say riches necessarily make you happy, but they give you a certain amount of freedom and so on. Some people regard that as happy enough. But supposing you are such a wealthy person, such a powerful person, that you have all the things that wealth can bring around you, it still does not guarantee that you are going to be happy. You may be content with material things, but there is something inside that, that needs to be touched, to be opened up, to discover something. And everyone is going to, at some point, be aware a little bit that there is something, no matter no amount of wealth, no amount of fame, no amount of uh, friends or things can fill that space. So even if you are someone who has all the things in the world, you have a family, they have all these things, it does not protect you that you will not feel grief. Maybe one member of your family pass away or something, the grief is going to come to your mind and to your house. No? So nothing by itself is going to insulate you against grief or trouble or suffering. What, no matter what your status in life. Now you brought this point, some people have gone through some tremendous uh, suffering and trauma even, I mean deep suffering, deep states of anguish and despair and sorrow. And you mentioned that even in such states, unexpectedly, it seemed that grace can come unexpectedly. One may feel even undeservedly that some great sense of peace and the deep sense of a reassurance that things are going to be fine. We don't know where it come from. Maybe it didn't come through somebody come. Maybe you're by, but you're by yourself and you're driven to such extreme of despair and you feel, oh no, what can I do? What can, what can change you? I'm doomed. You may feel like that. And unexpectedly, a joy arises in you. A space seems to open up and you feel, whoa, whoa, thank you. What is this? Where is this coming from? You see? And, but you used the word, you gave us a hint, they become as an expression of divine grace. Hmm? Nobody gave it to you. You could not purchase it. It come of its own accord, and your life seems to be touched by some inexplicable miracle, and you're feeling joy and relief, and maybe a deep sense of gratitude may come for some people. Not everyone, not everyone. But many people will feel, thank you, thank you, whoever you are. You may have been an atheist before, but in this moment, you are very open 
you maybe feel, what is this? I, this is something I have not, I have not experienced before. So let's take it like that. And then you say from this, you begin to discover, or you begin to, what did you say in your own words, mm -hmm. from this point? From this wellspring of love. Yes. Um, of course, it's a very overwhelming feeling. Yes. But it's, it's, it's not that it's outside of you, although to the mind it feels like it's outside no, of you. No, to the mind it still feels inside. Even to the mind, even in this moment, when you are touched by grace, even your mind cannot say, look, it's outside, because there is nothing more inside than that. The very internal thing, phenomenon. You see, you can't say, this is outside. Outside where? No, it's very much in the very core, in the very place where you feel your suffering, it will touch there, in a way that no, nothing else can touch. So in that moment, something must change in you a change of heart, a change of mind. You may have been a very tough person, very aggressive. Still, you are not beyond the reach of grace. And if grace touch you in this way, a melting begins to take place in you. You see? And there may be a point like this can be the beginning of your spiritual awakening. You begin to feel very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you that you've come to me um, I don't deserve this, but thank you, thank you. I want more of you. I want to be with you, whoever you are. You don't say, I want to be with me. You say, no, I want, because you feel me is a little bit of a wretched state. But I want to be with you because you have brought peace and nothing else has brought me peace. So right there, something begins to feel naturally grateful. Thank you. Thank you for coming and filling my room of sorrow with such grace and such peace. So continue now, what happened? And is it, is it through this method that one finds detachment from that divine love? No, is why we necessary? go to detachment? Why go to detachment? First you may feel deep attachment first. Yes. Maybe you are not attached to anything else but your own projections. But now something has touched you and you cannot praise yourself about it. You want to praise whatever this is. You want to say, thank you for visiting my house. Thank you. Please stay. Don't go. I don't want to be alone in the way I was before. I want to be with you, whoever you are. You may call this force Krishna, if Krishna is the one that you are used to. When you're brought up, some people, they're brought up, their parents had a picture of Lord Krishna, but they themselves were not particularly interested. But in that moment, you'll go to the thing that you most are associated with and say, Oh, Lord Krishna, please thank you. Please don't go away. If you had a picture of Jesus, you said, Lord Jesus, please stay with me. Please, I want to be with you. If it's Lord Ram, you say, Oh, Lord Ram, please, please. If it's Narayana, you say, Narayana, please, please don't go away. If it's Mother Mary, Mother Mary, please don't go away. Ananda Mai, please, Mama, Mama, don't go away. Whatever you say. If it, you don't have a name to it, you may say, Oh, pure consciousness, consciousness. Absorb me completely in you, whatever. But a sense of gratitude and thankfulness will arise within you. And then you, 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 you want it first, you want more of it. Because you had the feeling, I did not have it. So I want to be more with this. And in some case you said, I don't want my life back, I only want you. Hmm? I only want you. Guru Nanak, one of the great masters, great saints, that arose in this country. He says, rid me of ego and merge me in you. I have a prayer, I say, when you feel that depth and to be touched in such a powerful way, sometimes a prayer comes and says, replace me with you. Because you feel, you know, me by myself is nothing. This touch, no one can give. Not husband, not wife, not children can give. This is something beyond, this is something very deep. You see? So at first, you, of course you want this expression, we may call the fulfillment of Bhakti Yoga. No? You are feeling so totally loved and cared for, maybe for the first time in your life. If we take such an example. 
So of course, first you want to be with this. At what point would you want to be detached from this? Detached would mean to go back to your wretched life of ignorance and selfishness and arrogance. Why would you ask for detachment now? You want more than even attachment. You want to be merged with that. You see? And so this is what we, we discover, you know? You want to be merged with that. You say, no, if I had a choice between my life and this, all my life I've lived 40, 50 years as me. And for one second I experience you. And take all my 40, 50 years away. Let me have this one second and continue in this one second. This is how, this is the miracle of experiencing the love of God. Everything you have done, all the things you have owned, but when that feeling enters into your heart, you know this is not a common thing. And you will feel so driven. You say, no, absorb me. Let me be Im immersed in you. This is a natural, you know. This is when some people have never experienced even human love. Their first love is this love. So please tell me why you mention detachment. At what point? I thought perhaps that when you get attached to this kind of love or divine love, that in itself is not, um, it, it limits the, the spaciousness. So perhaps. No, no, the spaciousness come from, there. come from there. Without it, there was claustrophobia. How oh, limit what spaciousness? You had no spaciousness. Sometimes, sometimes your life is so full of you, there's no room for anything else. Then you touched by this power and you experience spaciousness. Claustrophobia cannot be associated with the God Self. Spaciousness. They say one of the modern sicknesses is a lack of inner space. Meaning our lives are so full of the noise of concepts and ideas and desires and attachments and dreams that we feel just locked into this box of mental and psychological and emotional noise. When you discover or you feel that you have met this Supreme Self in any of its aspects, you are experiencing peace. Where there is peace, there is space, inner space. You could be living in a room the size of this platform and 18 of you are sleeping in this room. But when you meet this internally, you have all the space in the world, the inner space. Outer space, you don't mind. You may have to sleep standing up, but inside, all the space is for you. Then you say, uh, this is a misconception, you see, if you are feeling that in coming to this experience, you may become so attached and then you lose your space. <laughs> you had no space. Now you discover space. You cannot meet, uh, have a, a, a sincere encounter with the Supreme and regret it. Like, oh, this is not what I was expecting. I don't think so, I don't think so. So this, it's too early to speak about detachment. If anything you want to be detached from, is you. If anything you want to be detached from, is our own obsessions and projections and ill-conceived ideas about life. You then feel, oh, this is where the fault is. It is that I'm too much, my life has become too stuffy. And now I'm touched by grace. I'm feeling this openness, this great, this great sense of space and joy. You know? Yes. <clears throat> I think you helped me. Um, I was stuck over there, Guruji. And when you said, instead of detaching, merge yourself. Yes, yes. And this merging is a natural, it's a natural feeling that comes. 
You don't have to think, I think I'll merge myself. You beg to be merged. He said, please accept me, merge me with you. Don't send me back to that old state. Let me be completely absorbed in that. At first we believe that we are separate from that source because when we have lived a life based in ego or personhood, you see, we are full of arrogance and like this. We will feel we have an exaggerated idea of our autonomy and freedom and we will try it out and at some point you will find that your dreams are, are crashing and your projections don't really work after a while. But that is a good sign for a human being because then it means that you become open to deeper discoveries. If everything you want as an egoic identity you got, you would still go back, you will stay asleep to your higher possibilities. So I want to tell you something, when we encounter difficulties and challenges, I've been saying to many of those who have been listening to my words over the years, this thing is help, helpful today. There's a tendency in us to be mislabeling our experience. People start to feel, you know, I am cursed, I've got bad luck, I've got bad things. And I said, be careful, because if you do this and you believe it, you believe it into existence and that will become your experience. You must look upon all experiences that come to you, that they are there for you to transcend them, to use their correct powers of discernment, to recognize that this is not something that come to make me fail, but to help me to transcend something. So you change your outlook when you give the correct label to the experiences that come to you. I meet many people who say, please bless me and because I'm cursed, I've got bad luck and blah, 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 blah. If you think like that, you attract these energies. But if you say, this thing has come, I cannot meet it from my egoic conditioning. Please help me to see it in the right way. If you have a spiritual teacher or a guide, they should be competent enough to help you to make them take the right steps initially. But a spiritual guide or teacher should not be there to tell you every single thing you must do. They must help you to step in your own power. A, a true teacher does not help you to become dependent on the teacher or even on the practice but to use the practice to discover your true power, that the God is in you. Otherwise, you're always going to be begging, please give me, give me, please give me, 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 give me. And then you'll get, you're getting, 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 but not growing. You're just growing old, but not growing up. And so a true teaching is not something to keep you always attached, attached. If you are attached to God, no? And then he's not going to just, uh, just give me, give me, okay, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. No, it's not. Because actually, even, even a good parent huh, should not give you everything you want. Sometimes people say, yes, I love the God because he gives me everything he wants. No, he doesn't, he won't. Because many things you want is not good for you. A good parent cannot give a child everything they want. And there's a lesson in that. Something, I asked this for God and he didn't give me. Well, that is his answer. No, no, uh, trust me more. Stop asking me. One, one uh, someone was asking uh, the saint, Sri, um, uh, Sri Sai Baba, Sri Sai Baba, we all know Sri Sai Baba of Shardi. Everybody in this country loves Sri Sai Baba of Shardi. His close attendant noticed that many people came to the master asking for trivial things. Oh, master, please help my business. Well, they don't think it's trivial, of course, but please help my business and thing. Please give me this thing and please give me this thing. 
And so the attendant said to the master, Please, Swamiji, please, can I ask you something? Why you keep giving the people these things? Silly things they ask, why you give them? And he said, I give them what they want, so that one day they will want what I want to give them. I give them what they want now, to develop faith. And then maybe one day they will truly want what I have to give them. That's a, a very generous thing. But sometimes a parent doesn't give you everything you want. Because you have to learn to want the right things, things that help you to grow, to grow in the correct way. Not just to satisfy your carnal desires, but things that will elevate your consciousness, give you character and strength, and to grow in a beautiful way. You see? So trust is really at the very core of that. That we trust, and as you trust, you grow also in faith, you grow also in wisdom and power. This is the beauty of the spiritual way. I was stuck. Thank you. Thank you. For pointing. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay, madam. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Very good. So, okay. Next one coming. Can come. Yeah. Namaste. Namaste. Grace brought me here. Yes. like so many others and I feel this attraction like I want to be close to you physical like hugging you touching you or be seen talking to you talking to you all the time in my head <laughs> yeah I guess it's a experience of so much people here but I also want to be you know I don't want to stick to your feet like a chewing gum all the time because it's so crowded there I, my question is if nor you, would I want you to be <laughs> my nor question would I want is you to if be. you could put me on fire so that I can be you it was two or three days ago I sat with uh, Gangaji was talking to her and it was like I feeling all the same attraction I want to be as close as possible with her sitting in the putting my feet in the water and being very close but I feel like if I go swimming, it doesn't solve my desire. Only if I become the flow, if I become the river from the source to the sea, yes. then, then I'll be happy. Yes. So, um, yes. And there's still some, some fear inside me. I guess it's fear of the unknown and perhaps it feels like a gap between you and me. It feels like a gap. It's like the fear of God, of the great mystery. It's like a gap between me and the mystery. Yes. Could, could you give me a hand and help me? <clears throat> okay, thank you, thank you. Um, uh, you speak about an attraction you feel towards, say, someone like myself and so on. This attraction is a very natural attraction. You know, you have heard also the term a divine romance. What did it mean? You're romancing with God. <laughs> you know, what did it mean, this word divine romance? It means that somehow you must have been touched by something. It touched something inside you, and that thing inside you come alive. It feels beautiful, and you want more of that. That is how this attraction happened. You see? And <clears throat> if you fall in love with God, you fall in love with God, it can never disappoint you. Maybe disappoint your ego quite a few times, but you will come to see your ego is not yourself. You see? So at first, you feel this tremendous love, and then somehow we don't know how to go with this love. It's like it's something newborn. And we, sometimes, if you fall in love for the first time, we do foolish things, we behave foolish ways. With God, this is okay. Then I'll let you go for a little bit. No? Because something is keeping an eye on you. It knows that you are going to be silly for a while, you're going to laugh at lots of things, and you're going to feel like you're stoned and so on and uh, behave like this, and it gives you space. If you're going to be stoned, be stoned on God. He's a nice, best stoning, because you are safe with that for now, okay? But it will not leave you like that. 
He says, no, no, because God is not creating an addiction in you. Because what is happening is, in the God space, it knows that you are really longing for yourself. And yourself and God's self is not different. You see? Of course, you can't say, I am. You hear sometimes people say, I want to be one with God. But it's not the same as saying, I want to be equal with God. Because the term equal is kind of competitive. I want to be equal. With, no, it's not equal. One with God is not equal with God. One with God is in harmony with God's self. You see? So you want to be in harmony with God's self, right? Because already you have had a taste. And that taste shows you that your life lived only from the perspective of ego will never give you everlasting peace and joy. And something like the God self visits you like a kiss from inside. And you start to go bananas. You go, oh my God. You want more naturally. You want more. It's not a drug. You see? It's, 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 the, it's the bliss you may be experienced or the peace. Either the shanti or the pram you feel. Yeah? The ananda you feel. And so you are attracted to that naturally. You see? Now you say, similar to the first question a little bit, you say, but I don't want to, to just be living at the feet. Now I said something once. I say, to live with your feet, with your head at the master's feet is to live on top of the world. Okay? What did it mean? To live with your head at the feet of the master is to live on top of the world. What did it mean? You see, Western minds have a very funny way. And what do they say? Oh, you put your head on. <laughs> How can that be on top of the world? They don't understand. What it means, put your head at the feet, means to put your arrogance down. Put your arrogance down. Okay? And trust in the one who speaks with you. He speaks to your heart, not to your head. And when he speaks to your heart, you realize that you are not down there, but you are above, you have transcended all the lowly things of the world. You, you are seeing life from a higher altitude of consciousness. That's what it means. You see? So you say, I don't want to just live and just huggy huggy, be at the front all the time, touch touch, feely feely, hug of hug and stuff like that. In the beginning, you may feel like that. But gradually, when you get more accustomed to that love, it's not that it becomes flat, but it's showing you something deeper in you. The more deeper you go, there's not so much need to go, ha ha, touch touch, feel feel, kiss kiss, you don't need that so much. Because when you're touched by God's grace, you don't want to go out. He internalizes your power. And you begin to say, he says, find me here in you. Why not out? Find me in, you see? And it helps you, it guides you to look within, to feel, to feel and to... And you have the sense that if you look in, you're not divided. If you look out, you may feel I'm separate. So it's taking care of your education also. It's developing wisdom in you and insight. So don't worry. A true master, which is uh, from the house of God, they are not going to get you to be so dependent. Because even a master needs a break. You understand? So every time more and more disciples out to the door waiting, blah, 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 blah. it's not a healthy way. You see? Of course, if, you're, if you fall in love, then they say you must do some seva also. That's good. Seva means the work that you do without looking for something back. It helps you to be more generous. You're working and you find real, real contact, real friendships are formed without looking for them. And you understand that you can work and at the same time you don't step out of your meditation, you don't move out of the field of grace. This is very important because there are some people that feel, you know, if I work, I lose my contact with God. This is not true. That's a wrong idea. You do the work that needs to, you to be done, that comes to you. You don't have to go out searching for it. As you trust and go more deeply into your discovery, you find that you don't have to work so hard to get things. Also, you don't desire so much. 
And at a certain point, you stop filling your day with projections because you don't need them. Some things which are scheduled to do, you will do, and they will work fine. But things which are not scheduled, you will not be hurried to try and project and control. You just flow with your day. And so every day becomes not just a good day, a God day. Meaning that you're moving, you're, everything is joy, everything becomes a joy. What I'm speaking to you is how I am. And how many people who have discovered and are discovering their true self, that is their experience. Now many people come, we are satsangs just a little bit down the road. And people come and they say, oh, this people, we go walking together sometimes. And people are a bit surprised. How are they so quiet? Maybe Muji is giving them some rule, don't speak. No, I don't give any rule at all. I don't like rules too much. Rules when they are necessary, but uh, not needed. When you have digested, when you have digested your understanding, you become naturally harmonious in your way. And you see, you can get on with almost anyone, because you are free of judgment, you are free of fear, you know, you are independent in a good way. You are an independent, but you are not a recluse. You understand what I mean by this? You are independent, but you are not, you're not afraid of people. You are just good when you are with people, and you are good when you are by yourself. This is a balanced existence. But don't try and balance existence. You just follow what is being shown inside, and you don't even have to think of balance. Other people will tell you, you look like a very balanced being. You say, oh, I am not even aware about that. So you don't have to fear. In a true connection and relationship, you know, with a, a spiritual guide, a teacher, or even a scripture, or your favorite uh, um, representation of God, it will help you to, to be detached in the correct way, not in the ego way. Ego feels, I don't want to be attached to anybody, I don't need anyone. That is very arrogant. The truth helps you to stop being attached and dependent and needy, which does not make you happy. It helps you to walk in the light of your own understanding. That's detached in a healthy way. I guess there's another question. I uh, feel a pain in my heart. Mm -hmm. And I guess the other question is, if you allow me to be attached to you for a while. Okay. What will happen if you become attached to the one who is detached? No, it's, it's a good question or not? Hmm? If you are attached to somebody who is insecure, they will try to keep you attached because they need you to feel attached all the time. I needy, needy, yes, yes, go, 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 like this. But what if you are attached to that which wants you to be detached in a healthy way? that sees you need. Even a little baby, even a chicken with her babies, or any bird, they have a nest and they have the babies, and the babies, they grow, I come bring you worms every day, I give you fresh worms. You know, at a certain time, babies growing bigger, you know, start to have your own feathers, you know, start, uh -huh, like this. And then one day, what happened? She kicks you out of the house. And, uh, 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 it's time to leave home. Isn't it? Even a chicken will do this thing. Our parents, uh, human parents, are a bit different. <laughs> We're a bit different. And it's different because we have a much more developed and a wider range of conscious expressions. So I don't want to judge that because I know people who have stayed at home until they're 50, 60, they're still at home. Some people leave home when they're seven, eight years old, they leave home. So I, there is no standard that I can say, this is the correct. You leave when you leave. So I am not going to say, become attached to me like this. I will say, if you feel love for me, I feel this is quite a healthy thing, because I have love for you. You see, we can have love without a love story. It sounds okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can have love, but no love story for now. Just love. Mm -hmm. Love is healthy environment. 
and a true teacher will help you to feel that love because sometimes we misinterpret love and think that if I feel love I have to cling to you don't leave me don't leave me but that is suffocating love love helps you to grow in your independence and also your interdependence because if you're too independent you might become proud and arrogant I don't need anyone you see and if you're too dependent you might feel I can't be alone I always need somebody you may even get into bad relationships just to stop being alone so that's not healthy so if you feel love for me my love for you is the correct love it helps you to it respects you it helps to see that okay darling why are you doing that you know just you don't have to do that and really yeah okay all right you can walk you see and you find your way because true love wants you to be strong you know not to be tough you don't need to be tough to be strong you can be strong and be very gentle but still strong and that the strength i'm talking about is the strength when you know what you are inside not in a headway you are and what you know and what you are are same thing so this love i welcome of course when we grow in that love where i live we live in that love love is our climate but we are not going around going hey love 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 no no we move in our natural way and we find that there is peace come joy comes like this of course some little trouble come we all need a little trouble trouble helps you to to not sleep to to not become complacent this is the proper environment and i hope that every sangha field meaning those who are studying together growing together support each other love each other respect each other they help you to grow in that way you see they speak with each other with respect they never look like this you see so still human we're going to make mistake we make mistake if you say you don't make mistakes that is also a mistake you, you everybody must make mistake but if you learn from your mistakes it's not called mistakes anymore it's like opportunity for you you see so is good thank you good thank you thank you thank you thank you very nice nice conversation thank you uh, mm -hmm. somebody at the back all hand that you can come whoever comes up first and... nice i like that you know i like that uh, that I'm not sure, but uh, okay. I like that because we have a short time remaining. How, how do you know if it's a mistake or not? Who's who's determining that? Who's putting the judgment on that? And is it all supposed to happen that way? Oh, hi, Luigi. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, could you start again? How do you know that? put the judgment on we what? We all make mistakes. Gosh, but some of that, part of that mistake is, whoa, okay, part of that mistake is, um, there's some good in it also. And you like that good part of it. You know, you're kind of like, it maybe wasn't that bad of a mistake. Or, and, and who's deciding that? Who's deciding? When is it ever a mistake? Okay, can I give an example then? Please. Okay. If you have an encounter with someone and uh, your words or your behavior creates pain unnecessary in them. Suppose you make a joke about someone just for the sake of having a joke other people. You see, you hurt their feelings or something like that. And you then say, that wasn't so, that was not needed really, you know? Then you may feel just from your own self, I'm not talking about some law I'm talking about just your own conscience tells you I did not like that that didn't feel good I took a chance thinking I'm going to make a joke and it backfired it really caused pain then I would call that you may say that's a mistake we're not going to go to court about it it's just your feeling it's something we certainly wouldn't want to do again I mean if it touches our um, consciousness or that part of us that also hurts okay 
I mean, there's too many choices out there, Muji. I mean, it's, it's a carnival. And I'm getting tired of it. That's really the bottom line. The real choices are in here. You may be presented with 100 things to do, but the choice made will happen here. You see? The choice will happen here, not there. There it presents itself, but the choice is made here. How do you know? Yeah, okay. Just then wait uh, on the Lord, I guess, as they like to say. Well, you know, I'm not going to use any cliches with you to say that, if you Please. say. Okay. Um, how do you know? How do you know anything at all? It must be something that just feels right in you also. You see? But we cannot, I tell you what I want to say actually, you cannot fix anything in the world and say that is how it is. Because it is, as I said earlier, the reality of a thing is not in the thing. I pointed this flower, huh? the meaning of this flower is not in it. Maybe it doesn't have any meaning. If there's a meaning, the meaning will exist in the mind of the perceiver of it. So someone might perceive this flower to be, you know, wow, this flower is not, it's, it's losing its life, it's rubbish, throw it away. Another one will look at it and feel, whoa, this, whoa, this is just the most beautiful thing I've seen. Different reactions to the same thing. What is the truth about it? Is it in our each opinion about it? So like, this is what I say, I don't want to put any fixed standard generally to things Life is about perception and very often, sometimes, very, what I would call, misplaced judgments about things. If you are too used to making judgments, most of them will be wrong. The life is not about making decisions and judgments. It's become too much of a habit. I feel as you become more relaxed in your heart, and more relaxed, you're not so much judging and determining and, you know, like this, you're more finding that you are moving in a natural rhythm with life. So obviously, if there's double-mindedness towards a goal, that would be a strong indicator it's not happening in the heart. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm going to go now. No, I'm going to stay in Rishikesh. Oh, yeah. Whoa. It's too much. It will feel too much. <laughs> so what do you do then if you have uh, lots of different ideas about something? You know, I'm, should I stay in Michigan? Should I go? Maybe I build a house here. No, that's too expensive. Maybe I buy a boat. Should I, what should I do? <laughs> then something at a certain point, I go, you know, man, go to bed. <laughs> have a little sleep. We don't have to decide. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. One bit. Thank you. Okay, somebody was already coming also. Okay, thank you. Namaste, Babaji. Namaste, uh, my This love. is my first session that I'm attending with you. Thank and, you. And uh, so my question might seem very, very basic to you. But uh, so my question is that, uh, you know, like, we, we live here, I'm, I'm an Indian and I'm in, I live in Mumbai. So my life is very like, very hectic in the sense there's work, there is kid, there is, you know, how to manage the house because it's not cheap living there. So there is, yes. it's just, so my question is when you talk about all this and I'm here, you know, listening to this, I'm wondering where to get this life, to be this attached or detached or, you know, what you're saying and be one with God and, you know, divine. Uh, where do I find time? Do I need to leave that life of mine to achieve this? Or can, that, can this be achieved parallelly? And how? Like, yes. I, Wherever you are, whatever your situation or your circumstances, right there is a door to your inmost being. I'm not going to tell someone, you know, you're in the wrong place, you are married, tough, all these things. None of these things prevent you from discovering the truth. 
none of them. You see? That is my happy sharing with you. You say, how can I, in amidst all the things of a busy life in Mumbai, do I have to give them up to find this thing? I happily tell you, no. How did you find time to have your family, to have children, to build a house? Life gave you time to do these things. So, uh, let me tell you, to discover the truth, it does not put a condition in you. First, you leave your family. First, you pay off your mortgage. When you are free, come and talk to me. You know, it does not do that. It says, even because you are so full and you're having such challenges in your life, I will help you and show you how you can find peace and deep silence and full love in spite of having three jobs a day and all this type of thing. I will show you because God will find a way where there is no way. And this is what I want to show you. When I say God, I mean truth, the consciousness you are, whichever way you want to call it. If your heart and mind is open to that, don't look at what, how can I, and I've got this, and that does not matter. It does not matter. In this country, you have the story of, Jing, of King Janaka. He was a king. He had so many duties to fulfill as a king. You see? But he became awake to his true nature. No? And he ruled his kingdom wisely. What gave him that? What gave him that space? What gave him that wisdom? What gave him that love for his people? What gave him that? Not his mind only. You see, there is a power in this universe. It cannot live without this power. But as soon as your mind or your attention turns away from your limited view of life and just say, I don't know anything, I, I don't know anything. If there exists such a thing, please help me, help me to, to recognize you. Please give me a sign that my heart can open more. You will get it. Even now, if you say it, right here, standing with me, I don't know how it is possible. My life has very little space for, for anything. I feel like I don't know how it's so tight. Is it really possible to have a life that is spacious and loving and full of joy and peace and wisdom with the situation and circumstances that I have to live with? I will tell you, yes. You say, how? I say, just in your heart, say, please, help me. I don't know. I, I don't feel I have the strength by myself. I don't feel I have the energy. I certainly don't feel like I have the knowledge. But something is open enough to ask for help. This is how this universal consciousness works. Wherever you are, you could be living in a place where there are no other people. If you say, please help me, I don't know anything about Advaita. I don't know. I cannot do anything for myself. By myself, I don't know where to start. But Mujibaba say to ask you, please uh, just help me. Even at this moment, if you ask. Even you don't have to put it in words, but inside your heart, if you feel, I don't know, but I feel a trust towards what Muji is saying, because he looks like he's somebody who has found some peace. If I could only have even a tenth of his peace, then please help me to find his peace and watch what's going to happen. Do you, do you then believe that there are, there are people for whom it's more difficult because they're, uh, they're more sensitive to the more sensitive to surroundings? Like, I'll give you my example. Like there are a few things which are something will happen in the family, you know, something which is not very pleasant. Yes. Or something will happen. It's more easy for him, my partner, to accept that and move on. And I will like keep on harping, harping, harping. So for people like us, you know, who are, I was reading it somewhere that there are, there's this species called highly sensitive person. So are, do you do you believe it's not that a, people it, it's are, not a different species, by the way. And like 
there are they're tuned like that so yeah, yeah, okay. it's more sensitive yes. so do you feel it's more difficult do you believe it's more difficult for them to achieve this in a piece i i don't feel i have any peace at all no in a piece zero in a piece Okay. So that's why I'm asking you this question. Will I ever be able to achieve this? Because I'm just thinking yeah. about okay. bad okay. things all the time. If you are open, I don't even want to direct you to say, do this exercise, do this exercise. I'm only asking you now, are you open to the possibility of the miracle of experiencing the peace you're talking about? Absolutely. Then we start right there. Your prayer begins already to be answered right here. But if you have a mindset that goes, okay, when? What time? What time is he going to come? Because I don't have time. If God is going to come, he must come between 7.20 <laughs> and 7.25 because at 7.30 I've got lunch, with, dinner with my mother. Then you don't make space and you're not genuine in your, in your request. You see, just open. I'm not putting any condition. You have said it. You know, then I am open. If you say inside your heart, I choose to be open, even if I appear to be not. I don't know what it means, but something inside me is seeking for help and guidance. I need to know if you, whoever you are as God or consciousness, exists. Then please reveal something to me to remove my doubt. Can you use my words like that? Yeah. Okay. Then you, I want to keep a contact with you. I don't know, where is Sri Sri? Sri is my mind. Sorry, I, we didn't discuss that. Sorry. You speak with her, I keep a contact, and you tell me if this is true or not. I'll do that. Thank okay? You so okay, good. Not everything has to be tick tac tick tac. I don't have to play ping pong with you about this thing. It's enough, because that's how it even began with me. Okay? Someone came that I was speaking with, that I liked the company of this person, and they were talking to me. It was a Christian man, and I just enjoyed speaking. And then one day, he came to my house, and we, we talked, and he talked talking a bit, you know? And then he... Uh, I said to him, uh, Michael, his name was Michael, young guy, when you pray again, uh, will you uh, remember to pray for me? <laughs> and he said, sure, but why not now? Said, oh, now, okay. Why not now? He didn't say, well, yes, I've got a few days coming up next week when I'm free. He says, why not now? Because now I always have time. Now, okay. And he prayed for me. But when he finished, something, I myself said, please help me. I could not pray some elaborate, spectacular, because you don't have to impress God. You don't have to use words like parabrahman and, and super consciousness. And, you know. No, you can just go, <gasps> if it comes from your heart, and in that, because what does a baby do? Suppose a baby wants to do just, just one's mother. It does he say, Mommy, could you come to my room? And only three weeks old. No. <gasps> Mom comes, okay, okay. If your prayer is like that and it has that yearning, it's going to get answered. Okay? Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I think I have enough space for one, one person. Namaste. Namaste, namaste. No? My highest regard and reverence for you. Sorry? Come, come closer to the microphone, yeah. My highest regard and reverence for you, myself, Yukrant. And I am a student of Dev Sanskrit Vishwavidyalaya. I'm somehow, I'm not hearing you properly. Could you, is the microphone maybe too bassy? Okay. Myself, Yukrant, and I am a student of yoga and alternative therapy. From, okay. Yes. From Dev Sanskrit Vishwavidyalaya. My question is, uh, how to focus, you know, because 
in our yoga course, we have been taught so many type of therapies, and uh, we are feeling difficulty. All the students to assume to receive all the subjects properly. So my question is, how to focus? Yes, if if you are engaged in some kind of work where you have a lot of information coming in, if you have a lot of information, like whoa, whoa, you're writing always, so information. You are not in an healthy environment. Okay? And it, it overflows, it's always overflows. Okay, say so overflow, it's coming out your ears. Coming out, uh, it's overflow, it's too much, it's not healthy. It is not a healthy thing, it's not the way to use your mind. You understand? Maybe for a short time. Maybe for a short time. Okay? But all this work you're doing, you cannot assimilate. Meaning that it's just, it just goes in your head, it comes out, blah, 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 blah. Some people are like that when they're studying university for their exams. They just do a full blast, blah, 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 but then they don't remember anything they do. So I don't know what the value of this kind of work really is, if it's just to get certificates. Okay? If you're not careful, you're not going to get certificate. You get certified in the wrong place. It's not good to use your mind like this. At least for a short time, it is okay, but ongoingly, it is not healthy. You will become very stressed, very tired. All these things will come. You see? Yeah. My last question is: What is it like being a student? Is it lifelong process or a limited period? What depends what kind of student? Are you a student of life or a student of some particular discipline? Yes. Then every discipline must have a beginning and an end. Yes? If you want to say a student of life, what it means? I just, that term just came in my life. It means that, in my mind, it just means that some of the greatest teachers are great students also. You see? They don't have teacher ego. They are the ones learning more, very quickly also. But it's a joy in that kind of learning. You see? Yeah. So, um, this kind of thing, I would say, if you are happy in your heart, you will naturally assimilate things in a very healthy way. You may assimilate things in a very healthy way. But if you're doing it for the wrong reason, if you're doing something just to make money, and it looks like for the next three years, there's no chance to break out of this mold, I think you need to stop for a little bit and really reflect a bit. Is this really, do I want to build a career based on this type of intensity? Then it's good to reflect a little bit, you see? Because your health is much more important than that. You see? You may use your mind so much that at a certain point, you just can't use your mind for anything. You just crash. You can't use somebody else, you could make me some toast. You don't know where to talk. You, you can completely blow a fuse if you do that. Some people can go on for a very long time. Some people have got a gifted intellect that can grasp and assimilate information very, very well. But you know what? They enjoy that. If you're not enjoying it, you're going to suffer it. That's what I can tell you. And I wish all the best for you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. Everyone, um, I, 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 it's, uh, I just, yeah. What is it? Okay, you want to come and say something? Krishna, we're okay for a moment? You're okay for another one or two minutes? Okay, because we say 20, 528, I'm told I should finish 530. Okay. Just one moment. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you.
please have patience because they do not understand. Please have patience. They cannot see. They do not have faith. Please. I know, and you're doing a tremendous job of patience. And this one is definitely ready. Next. Pranam Guruji. Hello, my love. Uh, my name is Prerna Chauhan. Uh, I'm belong from India and I'm studying in uh, DSVB University in Haridwar. Uh, my question is this, uh, Gurudev, uh, I'm a very emotional person and a spiritual person. So um, how, how can I control my emotional, emotionality um, easily? Because uh, uh, I have a... Uh, I have a spiritual, something spiritual, uh, worship, blessing. So uh, some people disturb, disturbing in my work, like uh, he's always interrupting my work in my business. And then, then I feel anger, then, then I feel anger earlier and emotional too. After that, uh, sometimes uh, I feel bad that uh, I don't do it. Why are people sad? So, how can I remove my this problem, sir? Please yes, tell yes, me. Yes, yes. 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 Mm. If you have a tendency, an emotional temperament, mm, then mm, it is just one amongst various other expressions of consciousness for now. If you ask, I'd like to, I'd like to control that, or I'd like to go beyond this, uh, this seeming weakness, then what I would like to, 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 to tell you, because we don't have time to go through an, an entire thing, but I want to help you with yes, this, sir. and I can, it can happen very much. Um, today we had a satsang, and uh, it very much deals with any kind of strange phobia or behavior or thing that comes out of our sense of our person, mm. and how to begin to observe those states, because learning to observe your conditions of your mind, your body-mind, behavior, all these things, is a very powerful exercise, very useful for all of your life, to learn to observe things, and observe with more detachment. So what I would like to say to you, I'm not going to go through this right now, Shri. <laughs> What I want to say, one moment, is that today's um, satsang is like for about an hour and a half or two yes. hours. I want to give you a recording or direct you as to where you can just listen or watch that recording. And if you are serious that you wish to go beyond these states and more, any other thing, yes. if you listen, we will give you a, some way of connecting with those videos and you watch them, please and it's free, you're not yes. asking yes. for nothing. You watch it, and if something touches you, then press pause and play again and listen, and see so you feel that you have grasped what I'm pointing to. It's not complex, it's not complicated, it's fairly simple, but because our minds are not used to this, it will maybe take you a few times to do it a few times, okay? Yes. It will help you. Sir, uh, when I was four years, I'm regular practicing pranayama, yoga. Um, sir, uh, 
I can uh, I can hold my breath uh, even 10 10 minutes 5 minutes so sir uh, I'm very uh, my mind is very concentrate my uh, awareness is very full but sir um, I became anger earlier and uh, I'm too emotional that's why I'm asking the question have you always been very emotionally inclined yes sir I'm crying too much whenever people hurt me like two hours one hours and then uh, I don't uh, I don't speak people loudly, but uh, I feel very bad that was time because normal people's not understanding me too much. They uh, because they are not belong to my standard. Then uh, how I explain people that? So. Yeah, you don't laugh because when she says standard, she doesn't necessarily mean no. in some egoic way. Just yes, mean sir. in that level, that kind of yes, background or conditioning. That's all. No? Yes, sir. Um, yes. As you become. Uh, I don't like to target what the problem is. I like to look at who you are and who you take yourself to be. If we can understand that, starting with you, understand your nature, all your seeming problems will fall away. The problem, if there is one, in our societies these days, is everyone is problem fixated. Meaning you're looking, trying to change your problem, fix the problem, do something with the problem, but the one who is experiencing the problem, nobody looks at this one. And you have to start to look at this one and to see if it is fundamentally who you are. And this is possible. This is possible. So what I am recommending to you is that something is very accessible. We can give you a link that you watch something, okay? And just watch it, it will help you, okay? Yes, sir. If you say, oh, he didn't answer my question, <laughs> he's deferring to something else. Yes, sir, I have lots of friends. Huh? I have lots of friends and all, but uh, I don't want to try even all so much. You don't want to try what? No, sir, um, I'm a very happier person, I'm a very funnier person, but uh, sometimes I want to be uh, silenced. Yeah. Did you hear what I said just now? <laughs> What, sir? Yeah, exactly. What, sir? What, sir? I don't get did, it. Did you, did you hear what I said just now? I was recommending that you listen to something, watch something, you see? No, you... I, even I don't have phone. I don't use phone in my university. But only I don't, I have phone number, but I don't have phone also. This fine. I don't have one either. I don't use phone. Uh, I have 300 I think, more, 300, uh, 500 numbers in my diary. You have but what? I don't have phone. Okay. I don't use phone. Okay, but yes. a way can be found. Yes. Uh, and uh, if, no. Fan trolling is also no, no. Too much. Hold on a second. Um, I can tell everybody that this video is on Muji TV in the free video, free media section, and it's called "I will not start with your problem. I will start with you." And. Um, this is what Buji Baba is pointing to right now to watch this video. So it's available for everyone. So I'll just finish off by saying I have been offered a certain time to finish. 5.30, it's 5.37. I don't want to take the liberty of stretching something. I feel that it's been a, a wonderful short time spent together for today. If you wish to pick up on anything that I've been shared, if you have touched by anything and feel that you want to hear more, you can follow these links and they will help you. We're not advertising anything, we're not looking for anything, just if this can be of service to you, fine. But for the moment, we are out of time and thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Swamiji. Thank you. We are blessed. Really, we are. I am so much happy today. Thank you. So, we want to honor you, our general manager of the Garhwal Mandal Vikas Nigam, and regional manager, Mr. Rana, is here just to honor you. Thank you. Thank 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you again, thank Swamiji, you. for blessing us in a short time when you came here. Thank you. Thank you again. <laughs>